How's it going guys? Derek here from Active Tips. In this video we will be talking about how to enable Z-Swap. So I'm going to briefly explain what Z-Swap is, but I covered it in the article, so why don't we just pull it in really quick. So I talked about this in my article, but basically Z-Swap is a way that you can compress swap. You know, it, uh, it will improve your disk I.O. and it makes things a lot snappier. And you can enable this feature on Ubuntu slash Debian, and I also talked about how to enable it on Arch Linux and Fedora and OpenSUSE. So I've been using OpenSUSE lately, as if you might you might have noticed by a little badge here that I've got. So the first part of the video, we will talk about how to enable it on Fedora slash OpenSUSE, and then after that, we will skip over to the uh, the Ubuntu instructions, Ubuntu slash Debian instructions. But uh, if you're curious, sorry about that, if you're curious about what's going on here and uh, why you should use Z-Swap, I make a pretty good case in this post here and uh, it's definitely really interesting so go ahead and check that out in the description. But anyways, to enable Z-Swap on OpenSUSE you're going to need to do a couple of things. So let's get open to terminal. So once you've got a terminal open you need to gain root access. Now unlike Ubuntu and Fedora there's you know, or sorry, unlike Ubuntu and Debian, there's really no need to worry about sudo because both of these operating systems don't disable the root user. Uh, one way that it's superior, in my opinion. But uh, so just gain root, and uh, once you do that, you can go ahead and add cd to default. Once you're in default, you can create a backup. Now, the grub file is where your system generates a lot of the configuration files for your grub system. So we're going to need to make a quick backup of it. And we can see our backup is right there. And the backup is important because if we make any changes that we don't like, we can just re rewrite over that. Now we just need to do nano w grub. And uh, we can go through and look at the file. So there's not a whole lot that you need to change. And in Fedora, this is just gonna say grub command line Linux, but on SUSE it has the default thing here. But just go to the end over here uh, with your, you know, with your, uh, with your mouse cursor, sorry, your, uh, your blinky cursor thing, and add the following line. Uh, make sure there's a space there though. And that's really all you need to change for SUSE, or Fedora for that matter. I accidentally deleted that. Save it out, and then you close it, and uh, that is all you need to do to enable Z-Swap for the configuration file, because this is how your Linux will boot up. You can save it out, and then you can go to regenerate your boot images, so your VMZ. Now you just need to regenerate your boot image, and on SUSE you would do it like so and it's going to reset everything for us and reconfigure everything and then that's it and then I can reboot and uh, we will have Zswap enabled for SUSE and the same instructions follow for OpenSUSE and and the same instructions follow for Fedora as well so that's how you do it on here so now we're going to skip over to the Ubuntu instructions so the instructions on Ubuntu and by extension Debian really aren't that different uh, from SUSE. The only real difference is the where Grub is pointed to on Fedora and OpenSUSE, they use Grub2, and on Ubuntu and Debian they just use regular old Grub. It's the sen it's it's just different folders and a couple of other things. But to start off, you're going to need to open up a terminal and gain root. And you do that with sudo s. Then you need to go to cd etsy default and we need to find the grub file. Once we're in the grub, uh, in the area where the grub file is, we need to make a backup, so cp grub, and then grub.bak, and that will allow us to create a backup just in case anything happens. Then we need to open up the file, so nano, tag w, grub, and then just like in SUSE, we need to find the command line thing, and as you can see, I already have zswap enabled here, and this is because when I wrote the tutorial, I did use this as my main example, but it's right there, so we can save it. Then we need just we just need to update grub, and that is update grub. And that will generate a new configuration file, then you can reboot it, and it should be working. And uh, I'm rebooting it, and I'm filming it rebooting because this is a VM, but uh, couldn't show you that with the other one because obviously that's my main OS. And uh, But yeah, that's how you enable Z-Swap. Uh, 
pretty easy to turn on. Um, I think it's worth using. Anyways, guys, I got to get going, but I will see you in the next video.